ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to This is a Takeover. My name is David Hensley. I'm the owner and creative director of Long Walk Productions, and it is my great pleasure to introduce your hosts, Shelby Ray and Gina Belmont. Thank you so much, David, and welcome to Charlotte, North Carolina's only female NXT-focused wrestling podcast, This is a Takeover, Quarantine Edition. Yeah. <laughs> and with me, as always, as you hear that lovely voice, is my tag team partner, Gina Belmont. How you doing, Gina? Hey, y'all. Hey. I'm doing pretty great. <laughs> it's a good morning. It is. It is really pretty. We had a hell of a storm come Super through last storm night. last night. <laughs> um, got a lovely tornado warning at around 1030 last night. Um, yep. Didn't really see the effects here, but nope. I heard like in the north of us uh, got hit pretty bad. But yeah. it is so pretty outside. Um, if you can probably hear from our audio, we are not all in the same place. Nope. Uh, we are doing a quarantine stay at home edition of Yay, this is a takeover. Safety. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> as all of the other shows of uh, Long Wall Productions have been doing, um, trying to experiment with some different ways. Uh, so Gina and David and I are looking at each other through a screen right now. Uh, good to see you both. Yes. Um, how, how have you been holding up, Gina, during this quarantine? I've been doing pretty good. You know, roller coaster every every day. But mm-hmm. I, I my job, I still upload content because I am a teaching assistant. So during the week, I have a pretty scheduled routine still going. So that has helped a lot. Um, yeah. And then I found some artistic ways to, you know, relax and watercolor. And, of course, wrestling because always wrestling. Duh. So. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Having the network was probably the best decision of my life right now <laughs> because I've been watching so many, like, old stuff, new stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, the 25th anniversary of Triple H just, you know, happened. Yes. So that's been really entertaining. That has um, been. I know you are eating, David, but how have you been holding up? <laughs> um, I've been doing well. Um been watching a lot of movies and starting new TV shows. Um, mm-hmm. Still have The Office here to come to and uh, still trying to create original content. And I'm also back to work at my day job part time throughout the week. So that has been nice. Oh, oh that's that great. Nice. I didn't know that. That's awesome. Yeah. So. Yay. Yeah. I mean, I've been, like Gina said, kind of up and down. It's been a crazy, crazy ride for this extrovert over here. Mm-hmm. Um, I have been, I'm not artistic like Gina. Um, I cannot paint. I cannot draw. I cannot, I didn't inherit any of that. Um, but I've been, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. Maybe out of this quarantine, I'll become like exactly. the level of artist that Gina and Ted have been. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've been, I've been doing okay. I was able to see my family recently. So I think that helped a lot. My family's like five hours away. So it's, difficult already to see them but um during this time I got to hang out with them actually be in the same room with them instead of just FaceTiming every day um so that was really nice um and wrestling obviously so um yeah so as we talked about in our uh last episode about a month ago um we kind of wanted to do a recap episode seeing as how yes. takeover tampa did not happen nope. um, but they decided to do the takeover matches um during the actual nxt tv show yes. um which gina and i have been watching together and we have through been. facetime which has actually been pretty fun it's, it's nice we've, uh, it's... incorporated uh kristen Varnell, who is Gina's roommate, um, gotten some really great, great quotes um, <laughs> throughout this <laughs> entire time. Down? Oh, of course I did. <laughs> I wrote down all of them, oh, or most of them that I could remember, because, I mean, as you know, I write just a stream of consciousness for my yes, notes, and they look like a per- mad woman wrote them. <laughs> um, I, I took about, I like, mean. over an hour uh, yesterday just combing through all of my stuff so that way I could actually not speak in a crazy woman's stream of consciousness when we did this. <laughs> what I mean? But, I mean, also, 
I wanted to mention, um, you cannot see us, so you cannot see what we're doing. But Gina and I uh, kind of threw around the idea of talking about different things that we are drinking while yes. we're doing this podcast. Uh, Gina, what is in your mug? Today in my mug, I have an Irish coffee. Ooh. So included is some Cinnamon Toast Crunch Creamer since Bailey's. What? Cream. Yes. Oh, I've tried that and it's so good. A little bit of Fireball Whiskey, it's even better. Nice. Um, well, I did not get cr- as creative as you. I just have a straight <laughs> glass of rosé in my oh. hand. Um, it is very thing. pretty. It's pretty outside, and when it's pretty, I like to drink rosé. There so, we go. There you go. But, yeah, do you want to get started, Gina? Absolutely. Awesome. So, this, is, this format is going to be very much ever-evolving, I feel Always. like, because... We picked an amazing time to start a podcast. Yes. <laughs> the um, best one would say. Yes. I mean, hey, we can only grow from here, right? Exactly. Um, so we, what we tried to do was we tried to pick out the matches that were supposed to be quote unquote takeover matches. Yeah. Um, because if you watch the show, you would see that whenever they put up a takeover match they would put on the screen um the takeover tampa uh artwork or the logo or whatever you call it um and that was in the back oh did you not notice that i I did not (laughs) i'm still new i'm a noob oh no it's good (laughs) that that makes sense i was sitting there like how does she know this i i am a wizard (laughs) harry that is what i am (laughs) what is oh um but yeah, so they would put the logo in the background so you could be like, oh, this was the takeover match and this would have been the takeover match. Um, I found out, which I'll talk about uh, later, that there were more matches that were supposed to happen that they actually did not air at all, hmm. um, which we haven't even talked about, Gina, so this will be fun. Ooh, I'm excited. Um, New content. So the first match on the first night, uh, we have... Keith Lee versus whoop, whoop. Dominic Dajakovic versus Damian Priest in yes. a three-way match for the North American title. So I found out that this was actually supposed to just be Keith Lee and Dominic, Dominic Dajakovic. Uh, Damian sense. Priest was kind of in, I don't want to say afterthought because that always seems kind of negative, mm-hmm. but he kind of was an He's afterthought. An Yes, he was an addition. Um, he kind of been in like little baby storylines with both of these guys, mm-hmm. um, and so they just kind of threw him in. Um, but I mean, the match was pretty solid. I think. I think it yeah. got off to kind of a slow start. Yeah, I um, wrote down that it definitely built up with speed, uh-huh. and especially at the end, it was it was much better in tempo. Yeah, I think kind of the big. Th- the big thing that I take away, which is always in Keith Lee matches anyway, yeah, that man, he's incredible. He's a <laughs> hoss, is what he is. Like he <laughs> is ridiculously huge. Like I heard the announcer say that he is three hundred and forty pounds. Like holy he shit, looks like, he looks like a big teddy bear. I just want to hug him. Oh, he <laughs> like, looks so he's sweet. Like, he could wreck me. <laughs> Oh, he totally could wreck you. Like, absolutely. He would just <laughs> sit on you and you'd be finished. But, like, he is 340 pounds, but he moves like a cruiserweight. Like, yeah, he, he really does. Yeah, like, it's just crazy to me. Like, there was one move that he did that kind of stood out to me was that he lifts Dajakovic from the apron, which is on the other side of the ropes. Yes. Lifts him from the apron over the top rope into a suplex. Yes, I di- I wrote that <laughs> down too. That was banana pants. And I'm just sitting there like, wh- how? Wow. Like I know I know you're strong, obviously, because you're a wrestler and you have to at least have some sort of upper body strength to lift people. But it's just crazy to me because he you don't think he can do high flyer and big huge stuff, but you think he would just like run into people like Andre style and just knock him yeah. over. <laughs> and I but think that's 
that's commendable that he can do that. That's insane. Like, oh yeah. my gosh. Well, and then like Dijakovic, like he's yeah, just I, as strong. Holy cow! When he freaking put Keith Lee on his shoulders, uh-huh. his entire weight was on it, like three hundred and forty pounds, and he walks across the, like the whole ring with yeah. him on his shoulders. I wrote down in all caps lock, holy shite. <laughs> holy <laughs> Not even shite. shit, but no, shite. Just shite. <laughs> yeah, it's just crazy. And I think for TakeOver Portland, they kind of, because they were in a match together too, and for the same thing for the title. <laughs> um, and they played it up like they're both these huge behemoths and like huge strong guys. And they built it up and it made it seem like that they were going to do uh, like, a, a, I think it was Braun Strowman and some other guy or Big Show or something. They they suplexed each other off the top rope and the whole ring collapsed. Do you remember this? <laughs> I do remember that. Oh, who was that though? I can't remember who it was. I'm uh, sure, we'll I'm sure dogs and barns will know who it is. They're <laughs> They'll probably call shouting on us right now, but it's fine. <laughs> it's this one. <laughs> it's this guy. Um, Hornswoggle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was definitely Hornswoggle who did that and broke the ring. Yeah, but but yeah. So I thought like something like that was going to happen, but I wouldn't be surprised if one day they would do that spot with oh, them absolutely. because they're so crazy big and strong. But I mean, Damian Priest is is good, but I feel like when you put him with these two guys, like it's kind of hard to shine. And he basically like yes. his big spot was the nightstick. Yeah, thing. and then that. But that's the thing is that that's how I remember him because earlier when we were talking about it before we watched this match, I was sitting there like, because I'm still learning, y'all. Don't don't jump on me. <laughs> so I was like, Damien Priest, Damien Priest, Damien Priest. And you were like, the one with the nightstick and the really super deep voice that doesn't look like he has the super deep voice. I was like, oh, yeah, that guy. <laughs> but he sense. does, though. Like, if you guys, if you watch the show, like – you know who we're talking about. Like, this guy, he just literally, he, he's huge. I mean, he's still a big guy, yeah, too. But, like, guy. his face just doesn't look like his mm. voice. And I know sometimes that happens yeah. with, with people. Like, when you meet them, you're like, whoa. Either their <laughs> voice is, like, super high pitch for them or, like, like five octaves too low, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And but I will say, he, he is a good mover. Oh, sure. Like, he had some really good, like, technical moments that I thought were really good. And I feel like all of his um, spots were pretty well done. It just is hard for him to shine when he is next to Keith Lee and basking in his glory. Cause we all are as you all and should. I, oh my gosh, I love this man. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I really enjoyed Dijakovic too. He really is also very uh, nimble for a big dude. His is not weight. It's more so just height. He's a tall dude. Yeah, like, I think he's like six four, six five, something gosh, like that. That's hilarious. I am so small. <laughs> overall, I think I, this was. I, overall, I feel like it was great. I think it started out a little bit slow. Um, there was one thing, and I think maybe this is why I gave it the rating I did. And I think it's hard for these takeover matches that were supposed to be you know, a pay-per-view style, and now they're on TV. There are commercials during the takeover oh. matches, and it, it, it takes you out of it, kind of. And like, it's always for, <laughs> it was always for WrestleMania, which we knew about. No, not WrestleMania. It was always something for, like, WWE or some other, you know, part of it. Wait, that right. was April 1st, right? That was still... It was still lead up to yeah, so it to was WrestleMania. Like, yeah, because it was all the the pirate ship commercials and yeah, the, and you and it was, it was like, just kind of like oh, <laughs> we're just gonna rub it in your face that we are not doing a takeover. <laughs> you can't you can't see us right now, but we're actually going up to our cameras with our hands and being like ah ah rubbing it <laughs> in, rubbing it in. Now NXT <laughs> is still audience free, right? Like, it is. They yeah. have not started allowing people back yet. No, so it is still in the style of Raw and SmackDown shows. Um, so they are uh, doing it in the Performance Center with uh, no fans, no chairs, which I am so glad they took the chairs out. I know, because... like poor, poor little intern 
who's like, you know, lucky to have a like a little bit of a job left, putting out all those chairs for absolutely no one. <laughs> no one. Like no one. <laughs> Now, are you talking about one of the poor interns who was uh, backstage during the Edge and Orton match at WrestleMania? <laughs> who like got knocked those... out in? Yeah, those poor <laughs> bastards who's in one shot in the background and then ushered out quickly. Oh, oh my gosh. Heart. <laughs> that, and, oh, not just the intern, the poor cameraman that got knocked out. Oh my gosh, that guy's dead. He's, He's still dead. dead. He's that dead. cameraman is deceased. Like, he is deceased. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I feel like Seeing the commercials during the takeover matches, it just kind of kept reminding you that there was not going to be a takeover. And it kind of made me sad a little bit because you, unless you, you know, watched it uh, after and recorded it, you can't fast forward through these things. Um, If you're watching it live, it just kind of, it it took me out of it a little bit uh, more than it would if you were watching it like a real takeover that had no commercials and it was a straight like four hour program. What did you think about that? I'm not going to lie. I misheard the last little bit of what you said. Will you <laughs> repeat that? <laughs> Sorry. I was saying. No, that was so me. <laughs> no, I was just saying that um, it took me out of, it took me out of it a little bit because. Ah, the irony. <laughs> yes. 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 Absolutely. Just having those commercials just keeping inter- keep interrupting you. It just does. It's hard enough when there's no one there, like, you know, when you're watching a match, most of the time there are people in the audience, there's like other things that help build it up and all that. So you're already fighting odds when there's no one there, when, you know, there's no interjections and then you keep putting in these commercials. It's, it's just, but we've been, we've talked about the commercials with WWE, especially just, they keep doing it. And I mean, even in other pay-per-views, they used to put the commercials for the pay-per-views. Oh yeah, like during the pre-show matches. Yes. Yeah, and you in so, advertising it for the show that you are already either paid for yes. or watching. Ah, yes, it makes yeah. no sense. Exactly. But yes, definitely, it definitely takes it away for a minute. Um, I went back and watched all of these, you know, main takeover matches that we were going to talk about today, but that was annoying when I watched it live. But it was nicer because if you have the the network you can watch it again and there's not many commercials however they did still keep the commercials for the actual wrestlemania part in this one episode and i remember it just being like are you st- even even on the network they had the commercial <laughs> for wrestlemania i was i just i wrote it down like why 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 you could have taken that out <laughs> like there's no point there's no point we already yeah. know but one quick thing before we move on to the next one. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to I wanted to bring this up because it just cracked. I actually had to pause when I was watching it again. I don't know why I didn't have it in the first time or hear it the first time. Probably because we were FaceTiming together and just talking while we were watching the match. Yeah. But watching it again, the announcer, there's an announcer. <laughs> he straight up sounds like a 90s sitcom nerd. And he's, no lie, I wrote this quote down, y'all. I wrote this down. He for real said, and I'm going to try to imitate him, who is going to wear out first? Because he who does will be he who loses. (laughs) I actually almost spat my coffee out watching that again. I was just like, who? And the best part is that all, like, there's two other announcers, and I don't know this guy's name, but I think you do, Shelby. Mm -hmm. But... They literally just, there's a moment of about three, two, one, and they just keep going. They don't acknowledge <laughs> it. They just keep going. But he kept making comments like that. And I was crying. I was laughing so hard at this guy. And I was watching the match, but I just loved the fact that his very odd timed comedy would come in and his little spurts of just, and it was almost like the old font and language style of his commentary. I was like, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, so his um his name is Sam Roberts. Yes. <laughs> uh, and he has this big huge curly fro okay. and he is he's a white man, but he has this huge fro and he <laughs> he he's a oh my gosh, I I don't like him at all. He's he's the guy who helped 
commentate the beginning of WrestleMania with, that's not him, is it? No, 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 it's not the same guy. <laughs> I was going to say, whoa. Not the guy that was with Corey Graves, no. Okay, good, no, okay. But, um, yeah, so he, yeah, he's he's a crazy, crazy announcer guy and I said stuff like that all the time. Didn't hear him after for the next few matches. He seemed to disappear, so. But we'll talk about that as well. Yes. Um, but, yeah, so overall, I feel like, uh, this three-way title match was pretty good. Uh, Keith Lee goes over. He retains his title, um, which to me felt kind of obvious. But, I mean, I feel like, unfortunately, like with the circumstances, like a lot of these things feel a little bit obvious just because yeah. they were having to, you know, rebook all, a lot of stuff because of Corona. And, uh, I mean, obviously, like, trying <laughs> their best to, give us something, which I appreciate, obviously, yes. but, like, overall, I felt like it was good, a little slow at the beginning, but, uh, I gave it three regals. I did, too. I did as okay, well. Okay, cool. But yeah. I, also, I almost wanted to go into the points, like, I almost wanted to do, like, 2.8, but just seeing Dajakovic literally carry Keith Lee on his shoulders, I gave it the three, and then the <laughs> Keith, uh, the Keith Lee, what was it, right after the, he did a, Oh, no, when they attacked uh, Keith Lee, it was Dachikovic and um, Damien. Mm-hmm. And they did a, Damien did the Hurricane Rana, and then Dachikovic just dropped on Keith Lee, and that was, that was pretty exciting. That was right near the end before Keith Lee just wrecked them all. Yeah. And I gave it the three at that point. So Yeah. No, I, I, I agree with that. So, yeah, our next takeover match, which I think was the following week, because I think that match right. was the only takeover match for that episode, Yes, um, was the women's number one contender ladder match, which I am a huge fan of anything that involves a ladder in wrestling. Yay. I just think it's so much fun, and for it to be a women's match, I yes. think is so awesome, and I mean, they've done women's ladder matches in the past. Uh, I mean, obviously, Money in the Bank matches um, and stuff like that. But just whenever a women's ladder match comes up, I get really excited because that means that they actually are giving them the opportunity to do high-flying stuff and to do these huge risk-taking things that they ask the men to do all the time, you know? Yes. Um, so basically, if you're not familiar with a number one contender ladder match, it's basically like a Money in the Bank match, except um, there's no contract in the briefcase. Uh, no. <laughs> so, um, so basically, there's a briefcase that's hanging in the uh, above the middle of the ring, and there's ladders placed up all around the ring, inside the ring, uh, on the ramps. Like there's. T- you know, ladders all over the place. There's There's some under underneath. (laughs) Yeah. There's some (laughs) underneath the ring. I mean, basically wherever you want them, you can find it. Um, and whoever climbs the ladder and retrieves the briefcase gets a title shot at the NXT women's champion, which is now Charlotte. Um, so we, Oh, I, we will get into that later. Yes. (laughs) Yes, we will. I, I love her to death. Um, so, we have Io Shirai, Tegan Knox, Chelsea Green, Mia Yim, D- Dakota Kai, and Candice LeRae. So these so are the it, six. So sorry. Is it green or cream? I could not understand their voices. <laughs> I really couldn't. It's green. Like it the is color. green, like her uniform that she wore. I just wanted to yes. make sure. Yeah. So I wrote that the... down as, is it green or cream? Because someone kept saying cream. Well, they, they keep... We'll get into that later, too. Cool. They keep mispronouncing shit, and it's they very do. interesting. They do! Um, yeah, well, yes, we will talk about that. <laughs> so, so, yeah, these six women, I feel like, you know, minus Rhea and Charlotte, I feel like are the best yes. women in NXT right now. There's there's a lot in the locker room um, that I feel like because of all this stuff um, are getting highlighted a lot more. Mm-hmm. Um Unfortunately, some of them got released in these last round of releases, but, yeah. um, but yeah, so I feel like these six women are the top, like the cream of the crop of the women's division and arguably in the entire company, some of them. Yeah. Um, so, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, there's not a lot of bad things I can say about this. There were a few wonky spots, 
Yes, just a few. Um, nothing that really sticks out. I mean, just from a storytelling perspective, and I mean, this can be an argument for, you know, women being able to act and tell stories a little bit better than men, but like, I believe a lot of the storytelling that the women in WWE do versus some of the men. Some of the men, Mm -hmm. I don't think, take it very seriously. But, like, some of the women, like, you really, like, this feud between Tegan Knox and Dakota Kai. Yes. That has been going on for a few months now, even before all of this happened. Um, I think it is, like, prime example of great storytelling. Yes. When it comes to wrestling. Because it's... Again, we talked about this in the last episode, just flat, basic storytelling of you don't like me, I don't like you, right? And it just keeps building and building and building. So, like, basically they both have knee injuries that they had to they rehab together. And I think Tegan actually had surgery on both knees. Oh, Um, man. And so they had built this story that, like, yeah, they're best friends and they became best friends because of their rehabbing together. And then at... Takeover Portland, or no, sorry, Takeover War Games. Yes, when all of this started, yes, I didn't because yeah. So Tegan was in the cage, and Dakota. It was her turn to come out, and she runs back and just wails on Tegan, and it, it was so shocking because they were like best friends, and it came out of nowhere. Only, yeah, it did, and it and it. She, not only did she start beating her up, she took her leg. Yes. That had the oh, worst oh, knee oh. and wedged it in between the door of the cage and starts yes. banging her leg with Bang the door. It. And it's just everyone in the entire arena is going batshit because yep. no Who's one sees it mind. coming. So ever since then, it's been building and building and building and it just keeps getting worse. Um, and then we have the intro of Raquel Gon- Gonzalez, who did not have a great start for me. You know, you know, she, yeah. Well, it, I think it all started with Portland when she literally had one job to one put job. Tegan through a table and she, she couldn't even, no, she couldn't even do oh, it. The table, poor Tegan took the full brunt on the back of her, sh- of, of her shoulders, like in on her shoulder blades, did not even break. Mm-mm. You could even see the code was- face was like uh yeah it was yeah it was bad but despite her I feel like they are you know doing really good with that storytelling uh what did what did you think of the match I enjoyed it I I enjoyed um it definitely built at a really nice pace I think that it was um really fun I wrote down uh some stuff that like I enjoyed I didn't get too detailed with this one just because there were so many elements to watch going on um i love the fact that mia yim's move is called soul food i love that i think oh my gosh hilarious yes i heard the commentary guy say it and i sat there and i was cracking up i was like that's amazing that's so smart wait i I didn't know that that's awesome yeah so um i'm pretty sure it's like one of her i'll have to go back and look and see which move it is but i'm pretty sure it's like a flip that where she flips her opponent over it's called Soul Food, and it's great. It's hilarious. Oh, um, I love it. And then I just wrote down some details that I just loved and that really stuck out to me at that match. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. So Io, Sh- Io Shirai, um, she is having a moment, and she – so Raquel – so Io Shirai's on the ladder, and Raquel comes up, and she starts pushing this ladder – so, of course, everyone automatically assumes, like, oh, no, she's going to fall down. Like, she, she's going to just hit the ground and die. Well, Io Shirai goes, nah, that ain't what I'm going to do. So Raquel pushes that ladder. Io Shirai starts walking on the top of the ropes and mm-hmm. then just beats the tar out of her. So Which, I love that. Yes, that's awesome. That makes me sick. very, very happy. I enjoy watching, like, acrobatic kind of feats like that. That I'm just a big fan of cruiserweight kind of style anyway. So watching these ladies, there were a lot of other moments like that, too, like climbing up the ladders that were really boss, just really awesome. But I, I did write about <laughs> poor Candace. Um, Io oh. just pushes her off that top of that ladder. And Candace yeah. pulled a Tegan Knox. Well, 
as that, a of Raquel, but yeah. she just falls onto this ladder and this ladder barely moved and she took all of it on her back. And I sat there and wrote, ah. <laughs> yeah, I think that was the, that was the finisher, I think. It was, uh, was the yeah. finisher. And yeah. like, I mean, that ladder was not going to break because no, it no. was, it was wedged in the corner and it was across, like in between the two ropes where, like where the turnbuckle, turnbuckle. <laughs> <laughs> I told talk you, turnbuckles now. I told you there's going to be one, at least one of these per episode. <laughs> um, and with the, with the rosé, it's probably not going to help. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, right where the turnbuckle meets is where it was wedged in. So that thing was not going to break in. Yeah. She knew no. that. Like, she but was like, yeah, yeah, push me off. Push me off the whole yeah. thing. Like, it's fine. She took it like a champ, man. Uh, that's why I love her. I love me some Candace. Awesome. Um, yeah, so I feel like everybody kind of had their spot. Of yeah, they either, had good spots. Even Chelsea, which Chelsea yes. kind of surprised me a little bit. She kind of, when she first debuted, she was, it seemed like she was kind of like the Nikki Bella like Brie Bella type, yeah. like I'm super skinny and I'm a supermodel and yeah. you know, every person talks for me. Right. And because, I mean, she well, has this guy who, you know, is a part manager. of her, his brand, you know, or whatever that means. What is it? Robert, what <laughs> Robert stone brand, I think, or something like that. Anyway, she even, she surprised me. I thought she was kind of going to yes. be a weak link in this, but she definitely held her own. Like every, like everybody else. Yes. Um, she climbed up that ladder with him, and then when they pushed that ladder, all of them pushed that ladder together. When she got stuck in that rope, ooh, ooh, mm-hmm. I actually out loud went, uh, ouch, ouch, ouch. Like, it was pretty, that was a pretty good spot. She did really, very well at that. Yeah. And so, yeah, everybody kind of had their own thing, either if it was falling off a ladder or going through a ladder, you know, with Tegan, who actually got to go through something this time. Through the table. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she went through a ladder. Oh, she no, that was the ladder, the ladder. right, because, oh, yeah, oh, They set yeah. that ladder up between the ring and the um, and the barricade, and she actually went through that ladder. So. Oh, she put, she, sorry, she had put Raquel through that table. Yeah, and she then, did. And then she went through the ladder. <laughs> so basically, she was like, this is how you put someone through a table. And then Watch she falls and through learn. the ladder. <laughs> and then she and, falls and, through, through a ladder. Then, so. yeah. Yeah. But, but, yeah, I think, um, overall, kind of the same like with the North American title started out a little slow. Um, but in the end, uh, EO Shirai goes over, uh, Woo-hoo. by pushing Candace off the top and having Candace do that spot with the ladder in the corner. Um, and she retrieves the briefcase and now gets a shot at Charlotte. Yes. Uh, which has been really interesting. Um, yes. but we'll, we'll get to that at the end. It will. Um, and so I gave, I gave it three regals as well. Yeah, I went back and forth as well, but yeah, I ended up with doing a three as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I mean, well deserved, I think. Yes. Um, there's definitely some great spots and yeah. some really good moments. There were there yeah. were a few moments where it was like, ugh, that could have done better, but you know, that's that's re- live wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah, um, g- moving on, we have uh, Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa. The one final beat match. I uh, tried. I tried to take notes again on watching this match because the first time I watched this match, like Shelby and I were silent watching this match because it was just phenomenal. And so I would decided I'm going to watch it again. I'm going to take really diligent notes. I couldn't because <laughs> I couldn't stop watching this match. It's just the definition of perfect spots and amazing mm-hmm. naps and just incredible hits. And, and yes, it had the feel a little bit of kind of being like in a, a TV kind of atmosphere. Like it was shot more so in that style, not really more so like a, with in front of a live audience, but kind of had, they might've had more practice. I don't know, but it doesn't matter because they nailed it. They yeah. nailed this match and it was incredible. I think this may be one of my favorite matches I have ever seen in XD do. And yeah. I loved it. No, I absolutely agree. And so they, it was kind of in the same style as the Boneyard match. Yes. But I think what the Boneyard match lacked, this match totally made up for it. It did. It absolutely and, did. 
So basically, I also got heard that it was compared to the Edge and Orton match. It was very, you know, kind of similar. I think this was also it, way it, better than that match. I was just, just going to say it is <laughs> miles and miles above. But Well, also, Tommaso and Johnny are a little bit younger than Edge and Orton. Yeah, uh, but well, also... Edge mostly, because I feel like Orton is still in, like, prime fighting shape. Yeah, he, um, he doesn't age. He's uh, there's there may be a like a painting of him somewhere that we need to go and you know yeah I made David chuckle with that one that was good yay <laughs> <laughs> yay literary references in a wrestling podcast yeah you know this is this is what you come for friends you come for the wrestling but you come for the literary references as well yeah. you know <laughs> been there every time now dang it <laughs> hey no pressure one per yeah. episode. Per episode, got it. Just like uh, word mishaps. Yeah, you'll have a word mishap, and I'll have mm-hmm. a little reference. There we go. Yeah, pressure's <laughs> on both of us. Right. Um, so yeah, so basically, what this match was, they called it a one final beat match, uh, and I think the reason why they called it that was one, it was supposed to be like Triple H was saying, after this match is done, your feud is done. Yeah. So like basically, just, we're okay. like, yeah, exactly. We're putting <laughs> the stop to the craziness because. Again, one of my favorite segments in NXT history is when they are basically just destroying the performance center. Like, they're throwing weights at each other. Yes. At one point, Tommaso breaks a mirror. Like, it was perfect. Um, also, I noticed, and I think we, we were also watching WrestleMania together. Uh, yes. And through through FaceTime, obviously. But um, there was one point during the Edge and Orton match where I was like, wait. Yes, is, I was wondering if you were going to bring that up. <laughs> is this the same spot where Johnny and Tommaso threw, or Tommaso threw the weight at the mirror and the mirror shattered? And it was. They just was. put a a cloth or a like curtain over the broken mirror. They did because she was freaking out. She's like, "This is this is the exact same thing. They're doing literally the exact same <laughs> thing." And at that point, they Johnny did Tommaso, it first. they did. They actually they did, did do it first. Um, but I think I was listening to uh, Triple H on a podcast. I think it was Corey Graves' podcast earlier this week. Um, and he was saying that the Tommaso and Johnny match was actually taped before the Edge and Orton match. But it debuted later. So, mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. So this debuted after WrestleMania happened. Mm-hmm. Um, but this match was recorded before uh, that match, and I think that's why everybody's comparing it. Yeah. Um, but everyone's saying that this one was better. I think. <laughs> but um, yeah. But yeah. So basically, they walk into this empty warehouse, and Triple H is just standing there in the middle of the ring, and he says, "When I leave, the match will start," and yeah. he throws a chair in the center of the ring, and then walks out. When I when I walk out this door, it's on. Yes, exactly it's what he on. says. And it literally, when he leaves the building, shit gets crazy. Like it Insane. literally <laughs> immediately starts. Like they are basically anything that is not nailed to the ground, they use as a weapon. I'm like mean, it honestly. is. They use like there's like a pole, like just a random like pole that they use. Yeah, there's like, uh, chairs, like, uh, there's water bottles, there's tables. trash can. Oh, the trash can. The, the trash, trash can. I forgot and about I loved the trash that. Can. Oh, I did not. I loved that spot. Yeah, and and there was one point during the match where Johnny he starts targeting every single injury oh. that Tommaso has, and he says them out loud. He, he does. He's like, like, oh, how's that ACL doing? Yeah. How's, oh, how's your yeah. neck doing? Yeah. How's it? Have you been healing well? Oh, well, you're not now. <laughs> just starts Liter- yeah, on. and starts just like hitting him. I think it was with a chair or something. Yes. Um, but at one point they start undoing the ring. Yeah. To um, the point where you can see the exposed yeah. boards underneath Ciampa, the. Yeah, Chiampa starts pulling it up, and that's when the ref was like, "Dude, like it's not worth it." Like he was just like, "Come on, dude!" Like. Dude. And at first, I thought that they were going to do a whole hell of a This is not use this. <laughs> this is not use this. But they didn't. They teased it. And they no. I, I hope they did that on purpose because I that was funny. Um, but, yeah, and poor poor ref. I think, I think his name is Drake. 
I think he just gave up halfway through. He's he like, no, just, no I mean, at one point he gets knocked <laughs> out and he's just like, I am over this. <laughs> like, I am so, I don't know who, oh, who, I don't know who drew my, my name out of a hat for this, but like, I, I want to go home. Stick. He, he absolutely, absolutely pulls a short stick. But like, at one point, and I think this was the similarity between the Edge and Orton and this match, they go outside, they chase yes. each other outside, and they get on top of a on semi-truck. On top of a huge truck. Yeah, yeah. that has the NXT logo, and I think it is the same semi-truck that Edge oh. and Orton got on, because Stop that one also it. had NXT on the side. No! Little little it's details that I noticed it. like that. What's that? <laughs> what is that meme? It's the... Um, can I copy your homework? Yeah, but just change the, some of the answers so it doesn't look exactly alike. <laughs> that's what they did. That's, that's yeah. legit what they did. Yeah, and so they're on the top of this truck, and poor poor referee Drake has also climbed up on top of this truck. <laughs> and he, he definitely had the face of, gosh, this paycheck is worth it. I just don't want to do this. <laughs> and it, it looked like there was at some points where they were going to knock him off. Like, I was totally scared. There was, like, a production, like, little trolley or little thing that was right next to it. I was like, someone's going through that thing. Yes. Someone's going to fall. But they never did. They never did. Nope. I was um, waiting for, like, the full, like, like choke slam kind of thing, like, at the very top of the the whole truck just to someone to grab a neck and just throw him. I thought that would be the end of the match. That's what I thought was going to happen. I thought yeah. that they were just going to throw somebody off of the whole truck and just land on the concrete and die. <laughs> That's what I that thought. Didn't happen. Yes. Um, but but I, wrote, ha- I wrote down, <laughs> I wrote down that being outside was oddly peaceful because yeah, it, was, it was this good juxtaposition of quiet and just beating the crap out of each other. <laughs> and you could hear the like, I mean, I, it might, I mean, it's Florida, so it might be cicadas. I know it's cicadas here in North Carolina, uh, but, like, like, I don't, yeah. it, it, either it was crickets or cicadas or some sort of, an, uh, like, insect, but you could hear them chirping, and, like, it just seemed like a very nice, mild, relaxing Florida night, and they were just beating the hell out of each other, and I just, for some reason, I was like, wow, that's a little bit peaceful. I don't know why. <laughs> <Excuse> thing. Um <laughs> Is this, new uh, this, white noise? <laughs> does this say something about me that like these two Maybe people beating each other up? Maybe it's peaceful, bit. but I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, so basically just brutal all the way around. Yes. Um, just Oof. they're again with the storytelling, they are masters at it. Uh, they just know exactly what to say and how to say it, and to make it sound like. They really hate each other, and uh, I believe they do. Yeah, it's just crazy. Um, so to kind of wrap it up, like we, I feel like we can devote an entire podcast oh episode gosh. just to this match. But I, just on the trash can alone, I could talk about <laughs> just the trash can spots alone. I don't know why I enjoy the trash can spots. Probably because of the loud noise. But anyway, um, yeah. Um, so uh, the ref uh, gets knocked out at he one does. point, and then it just becomes a I mean, which it kind of already was a no holds bar match. Like, there, he wasn't yeah. going to stop unless it got like to the point that they were going to like kill each other or whatever. Mm-hmm. But like, he gets knocked out, and then Candace makes an appearance, Candace and Lord. there was a which Candace is married to Johnny, um, and, and they she was always called, you know, Mrs. Mrs. Wrestling, and you know she's yeah. just. But that's another thing. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, and so she comes in, and at the beginning, before this even started, you see her hand Johnny something. Yes. I don't know if you noticed that or not. But I did, they were I did. in the car, because I think I even said that when we were watching it together live. I was like, wait, what did she just hand him? Yeah, because I think I said it looks like um like a sock filled with, like, you know, tennis balls or something like that. I thought that was going to be, like, a weapon that he brought in. Well, Yeah, absolutely. It was. It was. Well, in a sense, yeah. So, sense. so Candace comes out and is just, like, pleading with Tommaso. Because at this point, Johnny's on the ground. Yep. And Tommaso's over him. And she's just like, please just, like, get it over with. Like, I hate my husband right yes, now. Yes, I like, hate my husband. I hate and, who he is. Yeah, and so then she's, Tommaso just, like, starts backing up. And is just like, I'm, I'm, I, I don't know what to do. You're confusing me or whatever. And then she's like, okay, well, if you're not going to do it, 
I will, turns around and kicks Johnny straight in the balls. Like, right just straight on. Like, turns around, kicks him straight in him. And he flew. He flew he so did. high in the air. He jumped so high. <laughs> looked like she had some force behind that. Oh, and there it was, was intense. So she turns around, walks off. Tommaso is just, like, staring at her, like, what in the actual <laughs> hell? <laughs> And slowly he starts realizing, okay, this has gone too far. This is too much. Like, Champa starts coming over to Johnny and is like, you know, hey, man, like, you know, I think I think we're done. Like, let's just let it go. Like, let's just take Like, he starts getting, like, real close. And, you know, they do the head-holding thing. And they're, they're like, oh, bro, I'm so sorry, like, bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. <laughs> I'm so sorry, man. Like, I, this is too much. And then, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I had to make it dramatic. You go ahead. You, you, you go ahead. You got I this love, one. I, I love this part so much. You got I it. it. I just so, wanted to make the dun dun dun. So, so he, out of nowhere, again, Candace comes up behind Tommaso and then kicks him with the same force in the balls as well. And Tommaso goes down. And then Johnny reveals a cup that he has been wearing this entire time. And that is what Candace gave, gave him. him. At the beginning of the match, and I mean, this part was a little gross, and I was like, okay, this is a little gratuitous. He pulls it out of his trunks and (laughs) puts it on Tommaso's face. Yeah, it's like, and I'm like, definition of a tea bag there. You had that on the entire, like, almost 40 minute match. Yeah, that was a long match. You know, that had to. Ew, ew, disgusting. Ew, ew. Let's not. Let's not. <laughs> let's just not. I don't want that imagery. I, it's so funny. I already that, watched like, it twice. Ugh. That's what I took away from it was like, that had to have been so uh, disgusting. Uh, 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 so Gina, you are not on board for our next podcast. This is a tea bag. <laughs> <laughs> is that where you guys are going to test out different types of teas? Like twinings? And <laughs> That's exactly what that is. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So Gina, you're going to be the first guest. (laughs) Let's let's not, let's not broadcast that. That's not what's going to (laughs) happen. Oh man. That was great. Thank you, David, for that. That was lovely. Uh, But yeah, so Johnny gets the win and walks out with Candace and they are oh so proud of themselves. We're going to, I'm going to alter that statement. (laughs) He is carried out by his wife. You're right. Barely walking. Neither of them walked out on their own. They had help. <laughs> like, you know, Jampa probably came off on a stretcher. Like, <laughs> guard, yeah. like, Johnny was, like, basically, and she kept the whole time going, you know what, we're, we're almost at the car, and he's, like, uh, like dying. Yeah, <laughs> like, um, he, she, he almost falls he to did. the ground multiple times, <laughs> and she has to, like, pick him up full dead weight. Like, he was, yes. he was dead weighting her. Like, Absolutely. Yeah. So, I... I gave this match five regals. If I could, I would give this match six regals. Yeah. I, I don't want to, you know, we haven't done a lot of, you know, ranking. And I don't want to have, like, I probably am going to be the one like, I'd give this 10 million regals if I could. But I, I'm going to go ahead and give it like a 5.5, really, honestly. <laughs> I really yeah. would. I loved this match. Yeah, and I mean, and you're right. I mean, we have only been starting. And so that's why I was a little hesitant to give it five. Just because I didn't want it to be like, oh, like now she's going to give like for ones that she really, really likes, she's going to give them five automatically. That's not necessarily true. I no, just but feel like I mean, this, this this was so technically accurate. This mm-hmm. the entire match was it wasn't just a great storytelling. It was accurate spots. It was incredible feats of athleticism. It was the story. It was, you know uh pacing i mean they didn't stop once they like barely stopped to just breathe there was one time where they both were just laying there on the mat like (laughs) genuinely just getting their breath but this is not just oh we like this no this there's a lot of technical elements that need to be like celebrated for this match that i think absolutely and and i i did not know this until listening to the after the bell (laughs) podcast as well like they did that match in one take that's ridiculous. They did not stop long and match. do any reshoots or anything. <laughs> they literally did that match in one take. And when I heard that, I was like, yeah, I'm definitely giving it five. Like, that yeah. was fantastic. So, yeah. 
those are all of the takeover matches that they gave us. Yes. Um, so what was, was that? A Only a, a total of three. And which is a no total way shame wouldn't. because yeah. there was no NXT title match. There was no, uh, you know, tag team match. There was no nothing. And I mean, I understand circumstances being what they are. They couldn't give us everything. And the fact that they even gave us anything was cool. But I, I feel like going forward with, with this show, I am looking forward to having a full takeover to actually review. Yes, I um, agree. Yeah. So overall, I gave these matches a 3.5. Yeah. Um, the pretty, whole, yeah, like, overall for the three matches. Yeah. Yes. That's um, bad. so I actually did math with this oh, rating. Look at you. Um, I know. Um, so I actually did an actual average. I just, you know, didn't nice. get, took the average of all of them. So I think that that's how I'm going to do the overall rating. I think, uh, it's a pretty accurate way to do it. Um, so I kind of teased this earlier. But as I was doing more research yesterday to prepare for this today, I found, which I don't know how accurate this is, but there was a YouTube video that I wish I would have wrote, wrote the name of the YouTuber down. Um, that w- It was posted February 17th. So okay. before Corona hit and before all these changes happened, there was a full YouTube video with the lineup of takeover matches that would have happened. What? Yes, and I found it, and I wrote all of them down, and I was, like, yes. so excited to talk about them on the show. So these are the matches that would have happened if takeover happened the way that it was supposed to. So being all sneaky and finding stuff. Thank you. You've been doing that for years. <laughs> I have. It's just me. It's just who I am. Um, so the first match was supposed to be the Broser Waits, which is Matt Riddle and Pete Dunn, or as That's Gina likes to call him, Pete Dune. Dune. Pete Dune. Um, Dune. Based off of the Brave character, because yes. Mord Dune is a big, scary, ugly looking bear. So is Dunn. So. <laughs> I mean, this mascot is a bear. It's so. a bear. It's a literal bear. And he's so also he's, very, very, very. It is Scottish. He is Scottish. Uh, least, I, no, he's, he's, from the, he's from England. He's from England, um, yes. But I, I, I'm I, giving him a little bit of a Scottish card, just so I can call him Dune. In the UK. Yes, so. yes, yes. Um, But yeah, so the Broserweights versus the Undisputed Era for the tag team titles. So Undisputed yeah. Era being uh, Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly. <laughs> How much fish does Bobby Fish have? That's <laughs> 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 that fish. <laughs> oh, Matt Riddle, I love you so much. Uh, we're going to talk about him later. <laughs> yes. So then it would have been Tegan Knox versus Dakota Kai in a oh. Falls Count Anywhere match. Oh, man. Come yes. On. Which they have done matches like this in the past. Not a Falls Count Anywhere, but they've done like a No Holds Bar match. They've done a bunch of different types. They did a Hell in a Cell match earlier in the year. They just, they do extreme stuff, which I think is so cool, again, they that do. the women are being able to do all this cool stuff. So yes. that was going to be their match. Uh, Johnny Gargano versus Tommaso Ciampa in a Hell in a Cell match. Oh. Uh, which, I don't know, I felt like we got something that was kind of better than that. Because uh, Hell in a Cell. Seen before. Yeah, Hell in a Cell, like, you, you can't do a lot, but you can only do so much because you can't escape yeah. Cell. Yeah. But they were able to go outside and, you know, do all that fun stuff. So yeah. that one might have worked out a little bit better in the end. Um, obviously, so. uh, Keith Lee and Dijakovic for the North American Championship, uh, just the two of them. And yep. then this one pissed me off so much that they oh did not do it. I literally oh <laughs> got so I, mad. She's getting mad right now. I can see I it. I am. I am. I'm literally jumping out of my skin right now. It would have been Adam Cole versus Finn Balor. Oh, stop for it. the NXT Championship. You're lying to me. That, I'm not. that is dumb. Yeah. Oh, my God. Now I'm actually angry. Yeah. Now I'm mad. Thank you. <laughs> Why? 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 I honestly, I don't know. Again, 
we don't know if there's people in WWE who have gotten corona because no one has been, said anything. Yes, we've been but, talking about this. Yeah, there have been people that they have said that they are either stuck somewhere or they are recovering somewhere, but they have never said the words COVID or Corona about anything. We were talking about the Roserweights. Yes. And in the more recent episodes of NXT, they have been talking about this Cruiserweight Championship that has been going on. Um, Oh, the tag team? Oh, sorry, tag team. Plus, yeah. I wrote, there was the Cruiserweight Championship, and then the, I wrote the tag team, oops, yes, and the tag yeah. team championship, and interim, talking about interim, <laughs> and they keep talking about how, it, 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 I kept staring at the word, just interim, being like, how does that work, how is this going to work, so Dune, done, has not been around, and they keep making these references saying he's recovering, or he like oh no he's he's stuck they use the word he's he's, actually stuck okay yes he is stuck in the uk and that's what he says okay so that's different okay maybe i just misheard that but okay that's but yeah but why would he be yeah Mm -hmm. yeah why would he be stuck like is it because of travel restrictions or he Even must- if that's the case, like, they can at least say because due to certain circumstances with the traveling bans or whatever that's going on right now, because people he can't travel internationally. They yeah. Can't, yeah, they can't travel internationally right now, so I don't understand why they can't just say that. But Yeah, because anyway. it, shows, it shows weakness. <laughs> exactly. But, <laughs> but, yeah, those, are, those would have been the matches. Oh. Now, again... I don't know how accurate this is. This was not a WWE source. This was just a fan who, but it was posted pre-corona and Mm -hmm. it was, it seemed pretty, pretty accurate to me. But again, there might be some people out there who are like, these were just speculations or these are what they thought was going to happen. I don't know, but it seemed pretty official because it had the, the takeover Tampa, like in the background, like, the ships and, like, you know, all that stuff, like, the whole yeah. WrestleMania, like, vibe to it. Um, but, yeah, so that uh, that was what would have been. But I think mm, the fact I mean, that we even, again, I keep saying this, and I know this is probably, <laughs> dogs are probably going to say I'm, that I'm being way too positive and way too, <laughs> giving them way too much credit right now. But I think mm-hmm. the fact that we even have something to review right now is good, and the fact that WWE is even giving us content to watch like, new content to watch every week, I feel like, is is great because we are still yeah. able to get, you know, quote-unquote, get together and and watch this stuff. But yeah, now that they're an essential business. <laughs> I mean, good on them, man. Good on them. Yeah. But uh, since we didn't have a full card to kind of review, I just wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about some of the extra storylines that are going on right now. Yes. Um, as of right now the next takeover is supposed to be in August, which I am hoping that everything will at least be, which they keep saying quote unquote new normal, like nothing's going to go back completely the way it was. Yeah. No. Um, but it'll at least have some f- form of normality that we will at least be able to review a whole card. Yes. Um, and God, I hope so, because that's a month out from my wedding, and I, if we are not back to some sort of normalcy you will by lose then, it. there might not be an episode for us to record, because I'm going to have a mental breakdown. Oh, but, no. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. I keep joking about that, but it's, I think we'll be fine. Um, yeah. So, uh, I wanted to cover, and you know, we, you and I, Gina, had talked a little bit about it, um, certain people that we wanted to highlight during this time. Uh, that we think may have a storyline since this is kind of a wrap up or a recap episode. Um, Absolutely. uh, Two people were that we have been in a very interesting storyline, in my opinion, is Velveteen Dream and Adam Cole. Yes. So knowing what we know about the match that could have potentially happened with him and Finn, I think it's so interesting that, that they've built him and dream up to what this is. So basically, a little backstory 
uh, Dream and Roderick Strong, who is also a part of the undisputed, undisputed era with Cole, um, were having this feud where basically Dream was like messing with him, and his kind of whole thing is like he's got this whole like Aquar- Age of Aquarius vibe mm-hmm. with uh, kind of prince like yes uh, vibes. Good to prince him. vibes. Yes, and he basically it, it boils down to uh, him and Roderick Strong get into a cage match, a steel cage match, because they're like, oh, this feud's going on and we can't contain it, so we're going to put you both in a steel cage and you're going to fight it out. Um, so basically, Dream didn't want Roderick Strong at all. He just wanted to get to Adam Cole. And so he lures Adam Cole into this cage and locks him in and just beats the ever-living ever shit out of him. Uh, uh, uh. And, yeah, so he... Basically, Dream and Cole are now in a feud. Um, and now, and then they threw Finn in there. Like, I honestly don't know, like, where they're going. And I think they're literally just flying by the seat of their pants with all this. Well, yeah, and I think that it's going to be a really interesting matchup. But it's funny that you said uh, Finn and all of that, they're flying by the seat of the pants. Or they're, you don't know where it's going. Mm-hmm. It's funny because we don't know where a certain somebody has gone. Exactly. We certain somebody that's missing right now. Yeah, Finn's missing. And yeah. they showed this, like, you know, a quote-unquote attack, you know, backstage, and now he's missing after he was yeah. supposed to have a match with Dream. And it's he was supposed to have this feud with Walter and for the UK title. So, I yes. don't, I, obviously, I think all of that's on hold, and I think they're just trying to keep them relevant. I don't know. I think it'll be interesting to see what happens going forward with that. Absolutely. Uh, so... The other thing I wanted to talk about was the, what, as you said before, interim cruiserweight tournament. Yes, yes. So, basically, yes. Uh, the whole deal is Jordan Devlin, who is currently the cruiserweight champion, he cannot compete anymore. And that's all they will say, is they that he cannot anything compete. Else. And so, it's a whole, you know, uh, Pete Dunne situation where they won't fully say why he can't do anything. Yep. So, uh Hmm. basically they have put this bracket together and it's basically, it's not even a bracket. It's just a group a and a group B and there's four wrestlers in each group. And whoever has the best record, um, out of each group gets to face each other for the title. Yeah. So you have, um, Isaiah Scott, uh, Tazawa, Jake Atlas, uh, Drake Maverick, Kushida, Tony Nice. Gentleman Jack Gallagher, or Gallagher. <laughs> yeah, depending on who says it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, El Hijo del Fantasmo. I hope I said that right. <laughs> um, but anyway, he's a yeah, basically a, lu- a, leech- a luchador person. Yes. Um, so these are the people that are in it. Uh, there's already been some matches. Um, I just think it's really interesting um, that they are, like, the dynamic of this tournament. So if it's an interim title, what's going to happen? Yeah. When... Like who, if he comes back. Yeah. What happens if he comes back? Does he have to Does fight for just... his own title? <laughs> yeah. I mean, cause every other example we've seen of like someone having to give up the title, like Finn Balor having to give up the title, like they made a thing about it. You know, when Roman Reigns announced that his leukemia was back, you know, mm-hmm. he had to drop the title, but this is different. This is, He's not dropping the title. He's not dropping it. It's still his, but it's just... An in- so what's the point of having an interim? You know what I mean? Like, they're just yeah. going to give it back to him, so... Yeah, and it's it's like with the tag team stuff right now. So, like, with... D- uh, oh, my God, I almost called him Dune. Um, <laughs> um, yes. Dunn, with Dunn being, um, you know, stuck in the UK, as they're calling it, um, you know, they are still having title matches, for their tag team titles and he's not there to defend them and they have this other guy uh timothy thatcher who is you know coming in and who's supposed to be just like done in his intensity and he's he's definitely not in my opinion no, but um very, yeah it's just kind of a weird odd. dynamic and i'm kind of interesting interested to see like what's going to happen during yeah. all that um and basically i mean it's they're i guess they're doing their job by keeping us on you know, not giving us all the information because I'm definitely going to tune in on Wednesday to see what happens. Absolutely. Um, but yeah. And so, and the last thing 
uh, definitely is the women's division. Like, yes. I know I said it earlier, but, like, they are kicking some major ass right now. They're and nailing it. I just want to highlight it as much as I can, because that ladder match was better than the Hell in a Cell match between Reigns and Corbin. I'm just going to uh, say it. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was... Ex- yeah. Yeah, that was... Oof. I'm it, so excited to see where Charlotte and Mia go... Or, sorry, Charlotte and Io. Mm-hmm. But Charlotte keeps talking about Mia. Yeah, and keeps talking about how she's going to fight her, but yeah. I guess we'll have to find out where that goes. That'll be interesting. But, um, I, so I guess I kind of wanted to just wrap it up a little bit, uh, <laughs> since we're we're reaching the end of our uh, first kind of full-length episode, which has been really fun. Um, I kind of wanted to uh, throw around a segment at the end, so kind of like what uh, This Is A Work does with their... Uh, you know, acting segment like you do, David, and the fashion plate segment that Chris does, <laughs> which I feel like he secretly loves, but says that he hates it. Oh, I agree. But we'll yeah. never know. <laughs> um, so I kind of wanted to come up with uh, the EST of NXT. Um, and basically your EST of life, uh, kind of do that kind of statement. So the EST uh, what is a, is a uh, moniker that Bianca Belair uses um it's kind of her thing so it's basically it is she is the greatest the fastest the strongest the best in NXT that was her yes. thing um, I love that now, woman. now oh she's great and now that she <sighs> has gone to Raw she is now the EST of WWE so that's kind of her new thing Good um for her so I kind of wanted to do at the end of every episode like the EST of NXT so the best uh, person in NXT, man or woman, uh, that's uh, doing their best right now. And then your EST of life. And I felt like during this, you know, time of quarantine, you can kind of focus on the negatives a lot. Uh, but I think it would be nice. And even going forward, after we're not quarantined and isolated, to have a EST of life. Or, yeah. you know, we can play around with the name a little bit. But, like, oh, um, so, I yeah, like so, that. yeah, thanks. Uh, so, Gina... Uh, who is your EST of NXT right now? Oh, that's really tough. Honestly, right now, I'm going to have to say Candace and Johnny. Mm-hmm. Um, Johnny Gargano and Candice LeRae right now. They're, I'm a huge fan of their dynamic now and their build. I think that I'm really excited to see this character change for them and this development. Um, but if not them, then always Keith Lee. Just Keith Lee just always <laughs> brings it for me. I just love him to death. Yeah, I was definitely going to say Candice LeRae as well. Like, yeah. she is finally getting this push that I feel yes. like she deserves. Like, she's always been Johnny's wife or Mrs. Helping Wrestling. up Charlotte or helping a push up Becky and all these yeah. other people in front of her. Because she's been there for ages. She's been there so even long. when... Charlotte and Becky and Sasha and Bailey were still in NXT. She was there Bless. and did not, you know, get the airtime like I thought she should have until after they left. Um, so, so yeah, I definitely feel like Candice is my is my EST as well. Uh, nice. What's your What's your EST of life right now? Um, I think it would have to be just being able to appreciate time with people more now that you don't have it. And I guess that hope of looking forward to the big, huge ass party we're going to have when all <laughs> this is <laughs> over, that's going to be, it. we're going to throw down. We're going to throw down. Oh, that's, absolutely. That's my EST of life right now, is imagining that party and the havoc we're going to wreak. <laughs> David is just shaking his head vigorously up and down. <laughs> yeah, Katie and I were talking about this the other day. I feel like it's going to end up having to be like a two-day event. Oh, yeah. Like, like we're not moving. Bring a change of clothes. Uh, and a lot of <laughs> and a lot of aspirin. Oh yes, <laughs> woohoo! Absolutely. Well, David, I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot. Um, I won't ask you your EST of NXT because you don't watch. But um, what's your EST of life right now? Oh boy. Well, I'm pretty sure that I haven't gotten COVID yet because of uh, how much whiskey I drink. So. <laughs> um, That's the secret cure of COVID. Right? I'm pretty <laughs> sure. Yeah, just no one I wants to admit it. Whiskey. Um, I, as frustrating as these last few weeks have been, I have actually gotten to sit down and write again. So that's been nice to 
flex the creative side uh, when normally I'm so busy, you know, with rehearsals or work or whatever. So that has mm -hmm. been getting to, you know, have a creative writing outlet again has been nice. Well, that's great. That's awesome. What about well, you, Shelby? I think for me, because anyone who knows me knows how social of a person I am. Like, I've always been that way. I get my energy from people. And so being isolated and being quarantined has been a huge challenge for me. Um, not being able to physically be in the same room with you guys, even right now, is kind of difficult. Like, sometimes I'll get off FaceTime and Zoom calls and I'll be so drained because... Not that I'm faking being happy. It's just that I just love feeding off everyone's happiness and energy that, like, it feels kind of filtered to me, you know? Yeah. Um, so I've definitely, with that being said, I have been able to FaceTime my family pretty much every day, which has honestly been getting me through because it's been giving me something to look forward to. So I've been able to do group FaceTime calls with my uh, sister and nephew and my mom and my grandparents even most days, uh, which has been really good. And I was able to actually physically go see them uh, a couple weeks ago. And it just really made my outlook change completely. Uh, so I think that in itself has, has really helped. So yeah. that would definitely my, my family. So shout out to the Ray and Nelson clan uh, <laughs> for getting me through this quarantine. Um, but yeah, so that kind of, uh, wraps it up pretty good. I think, you know, we're just going to take it as it comes with, mm -hmm. uh, these next episodes and, you know, we'll talk about it and hopefully we'll, you know, get back to you guys, uh, as soon as possible. Assuming that things do go back to normal eventually, when can we expect the next NXT pay-per-view and where will it be? So the next pay-per-view, I'm not exactly sure where it's going to be yet. Uh, I can't remember exactly, but I know it's going to be in August. Okay. That's where it's, that's when it's supposed to be. So that's when we'll be coming back to you. Okay. Excellent. Now the next WWE pay-per-view that is coming up is Money in the Bank on May 10th. Um, oh, so after today's episode of This is a Takeover, the Long Walk family is going on hiatus for a little while until this is over and we can start gathering and recording in person again. So uh, that coincides with a decision made by David Two Dogs Hayes, host of This Is A Work, uh, where he has decided, and he could change his mind, it's not official yet, but he has decided that he doesn't want to cover uh, pay-per-views without audiences anymore. Uh, so instead, what we're thinking right now is on Sunday, May the 10th, for Money in the Bank, he might be live streaming his reactions and uh, doing maybe a live commentary or after each match doing a live recap with his Meltzer ratings. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, if you want to watch his live streams, you can do that by following our Facebook page, Long Walk Talks, and this is a work. For me and Gina and David, uh, you know, if you, if you can go home at the end of the day and just kind of sit back and watch wrestling with a glass of wine and see someone that you love, then you don't need to be caught up to the main roster. You're doing great where you are. Uh, in the show notes, you can find more information about how to listen to older episodes and see more of Long Walk Productions' uh, original content. And if you enjoy the show, please make sure to leave us a rating and a review on whatever platform that you are listening on. So thank you very much, Shelby and Gina, and we hope that you have enjoyed listening to the show.